Hey guys, it's uh, Milo here. I um, I have a horrible, I don't know what it is, the flu, I think, so sorry if I sound like I do. Um, you've probably seen by now reports and, and videos that allege that um, I'm some kind of apologist for pedophilia or some kind of enabler of, of child abuse. Um, nothing could be further from the truth. And um, I find those crimes to be absolutely disgusting. I find those people to be disgusting. And I think that my reporting on this speaks for itself. I've, um, I've exposed three pedophiles in my career. Um, one of them, uh, Nicholas Nyberg, who was a uh, anti-gaming activist who um, supported white nationalism and uh, described himself as a pedophile. Um, another was Luke Bozier, a London uh, um, entrepreneur, former business partner of Louise Mensch, who was caught um, asking for underage material online. And a third one, uh, Chris Layden, is a London photographer who I exposed um, and who is about to start a rape trial as a result of my reporting. I've also, on many occasions, um, blisteringly criticized the left for its constant excuse making over pedophilia. Um, in particular, Salon, which, um, which publishes Todd Nickerson, a so-called virtuous pedophile, a guy who thinks that um, he's okay because although he's attracted to children, he doesn't actually do anything. I think my record speaks for itself and the portions that were edited out of the videos that you've seen show, for instance, me saying that I agree with the current age of consent, that I support, that I think, uh, that I, I support the current age of consent, that it's, quote, about right, end quote. Um, I think that people can put two and two together and work out why this video is coming out now, the stuff that's been on the internet for a really long time. Um, I think people can understand, you know, obviously there's frustration from some bits of the Republican establishment, but I don't want to blame anyone because I said those, I said the things that you've seen and some of them were very stupidly worded. Some of the, the, the wording that I used um, was dumb. And if I could go back, in most cases, you guys know, if I say something outrageous or offensive, in most cases my only regret is I didn't piss off more people. But in this case, if I could do it again, I wouldn't phrase things the same way because it's led to confusions. For instance, um, I was told that um, one of the numbers that people are fixating on is 13 and the implication that I um, were at, was advocating for, for sex between 13 year olds. Well, the video that came out was edited to, to include a section where I said that um, consent was arbitrary and oppressive, but that was from a discussion about affirmative consent on college campuses. That was placed next to a section about 13 year olds to make it look like I was saying that consent for 13 year olds was arbitrary and oppressive, and that's not the case. When I spoke about relationships between older men and younger men, I used the word boys, and I, I shouldn't have done that. Um, gay people do say, like, boy and girl to mean people of, of uh, you know, consenting adults very often. Sometimes it's like, it's, it's usually like the passive partner gets to, you know, is, is the boy. Um, but I understand that straight people wouldn't necessarily know that. And so, um, you know, that, that I wouldn't do again. All I would reiterate is, um, you know, you guys know that I can make edgy jokes. You guys know that I can uh, sometimes... Um, push the boundaries of acceptable humor. This is one of those cases in which I, I should have phrased things differently. And these videos from a year ago and a year and a half ago, and I really just had no idea I was, I was gonna end up being this famous. Um, you know, late, boozy, long live streams. Um, I phrased things poorly and I enabled my detractors and critics to assemble um, material that looked very damning, but which does not reflect my opinions. Um, so for that, I'm sorry, because I know that a lot of you are out there defending me and, and wondering how to do that, because the material does look so um, unpleasant and distasteful. Another thing that looks unpleasant and distasteful about it is the tone in which I'm talking. Um, I would just say this. This is something of which I was a victim. It's something that I lived through. It's something that happened to me. It didn't ruin my life. And the reason it didn't ruin my life is I had laughter and I had humor and I was able to turn it into a joke and I was able to um, brush it off and make jokes, make what would or obviously jokes, you know, like getting head from a priest kind of jokes. Um, you guys know that. I understand that a lot of, you know, 60 year old journalists wouldn't and would be very horrified by the tone, um, by the sort of apparently flippant tone that I was using. Again, um, you know, speaking about this subject, I don't think anything should be off limits for humor, but um, I do regret some of the word choices. I have been um, uninvited from CPAC, which I'm disappointed with. Um, the statement from CPAC said um, that there was a video in which I uh, defended pedophilia. That simply isn't true.